Hello, in this video we're in the multiple linear regression setting and we're going to look at t-test for a single beta parameter. Now here's the multi, uh, multiple linear regression model. So it's y is equal to x beta plus error. Uh, x is of course the design matrix. This is a vector of, of parameters of interest. Since we're going to do a test we have to make some distributional assumptions. So we're going to assume that the epsilon terms or the error terms are multivariate normal with mean zero and constant variance sigma squared and uh, variance covariance matrix sigma squared i. Now the least squares estimates for beta we're going to call them beta hat um, is multivariate normal. So this is in previous video number 22 on the list we showed that beta hat or the least squares estimates for beta can be written in matrix form like this. And if you think of this first part as just some matrix, call it R, then it's clearly linear in Y. The expected value we showed was beta, so it's unbiased. The variance of the least squares estimate, beta hat, is sigma squared um, x transpose x inverse. And so therefore, beta hat is multivariate normal with mean beta and variance covariance matrix this. So now to develop a test for one of the betas, so beta i is zero versus that it's not zero, and really what this means is that does the ith predictor contribute to predicting y, you know, the, the dependent variable. So let's develop this test. So let's let EI be a vector, a k plus 1 vector, uh, with a 1 in the ith position or component and zeros elsewhere. Then EI transpose times beta, and that's a vector, and um, is, is the ith beta component, right? It isolates it in this matrix product. Now, as a point estimate, let's use the least squares estimate for beta i. Remember, so if we think about this as beta i. It's, it's one of these beta components. And so the, the, a point estimate is the least squares estimate for it, which is beta i hat. And let's look at beta, the expected value of beta i hat which is this. Now this is a known constant so it can come out front and the expected value of beta hat is beta and then EI transpose beta is beta I so it's unbiased you know of what we're trying to estimate. Let's look at the variance of beta I hat which is the variance of this. Now this invariance that comes out front and it transposes out back that's one of the properties of variance and, and the variance of beta hat we said was sigma squared x transpose x inverse. Now this piece right there, that sigma squared, is actually just a constant. So it can come out front. And the way that these, these vectors work, EI vectors, kind of pre and post multiplying like that, grabs that i or the i i diagonal element of this. So if we think of it was this quantity of sigma squared CII, where CII is the i diagonal element of this. That is the variance of the beta. So, notice that beta i hat, which is this EI transpose beta hat, but beta hat is is this in matrix notation which is clearly linear in the y's. So that implies that beta i hat is normal with mean beta i and, and variance sigma squared c i i. And of course if we subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation we get a standard normal distribution. And then we might be able to use this for a test for the ith beta. Well it turns out we sort of can. Well, we don't know sigma squared, the, uh, the air variance. Now we can use an unbiased estimate for sigma squared and then say with large samples then this roughly follows the standard normal distribution 
or since we're introducing another random variable, we have two, it changes the overall distribution. And, and some would say, well, if you estimate the population variance with the sample variance, then it magically changes it to a t-test. And they're sort of right, but there's a lot more going on behind the scenes than, than that. But in the end, it looks like that's what we're doing. So here's a t-test for beta i equal to zero versus beta i not equal to zero. And so this piece here, that's the standard normal distribution that we just developed. And the uh, sigma, sum of squares residual divided by sigma squared follows a chi-squared distribution. And it has n minus k plus 1 degrees of freedom. And it turns out that if we just look at this piece right here, that's an unbiased estimate for sigma squared. But here we have a standard normal and we have a chi-squared divided by its degrees of freedom. And that's what we define as a T distribution with N minus K plus 1 degrees of freedom. Of course, this is under the assumption that the numerator and the denominator are independent. Now, this simplifies to this, right? It's just beta I. And then the CI, square root of CI is here. The sigma squared is canceled. This right here is an estimate for the sigma squared. Let's call it S squared. Square root of S squared is S. Right, And now, if we go back and, and look at this, it looks like we're just replacing an unbiased estimate for that, that variance there, right? So remember, this piece is zero, so we have beta i hat over, and then of course, that can come out sigma square root of cii. So if we replace that sigma with s, then it magically turns it to a t-distribution. <laughs> Um, so now let's see if they're independent here. The only random component here is beta i hat, and the random component here is the sum of squares residual. So beta i hat is this, right? It's e i transposed times beta hat, the, the least squares estimate. And this is the sum of squares residual. And I have a video called Independence of Quadratic Forms that says it, it, the product of this and this inner matrix, if it's zero, then they're independent. And so we take this matrix here and then times this, and then we can instantly say it's zero. And, and we can after watching this playlist because we know that I minus H is a perpendicular projection matrix onto the orthogonal complement of the column space of X. So anything, so, so X transpose this is zero. So Okay, so let's say that. So I minus H is a perpendicular projections onto the orthogonal complement is the column space of X. So that says X, you know, when you pre-multiply anything in the column space of X, which X clearly is, we get zero back, okay? But if we transpose everything, we get this, right? The transpose of zero is still zero. This is uh, uh, a symmetric item potent matrix, so we get it back, and then, of course, have to transpose x. So this is still zero. And that's why. So thus the numerator and denominator are independent. Now note that the t-test checks for the marginal contribution made by adding xi, right? It's associated with beta i, to the model containing all other regressors. So the, the null hypothesis is really saying is this beta i zero? And notice that we go from beta i minus one to beta i plus one because it's missing versus they're all there. That's the alternative. And that's what this test statistic checks. So rejecting the null hypothesis implies that the full model in the alternative is significantly better than the reduced model in the null hypothesis. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.